Welcome back to the 47th part in this Python series on the Django framework. In this one we're going to carry on working on the form on the home page and at the moment we've got a functional form and we can submit data to, into that form as a user and submit a post request to our web server and we can then have access to that in our view. But what we can't do yet is have the page refresh and then have that data presented to us again. So in other words, we can't save the data to the database that was entered in the form by the user. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So the first thing I want to do is go to the uh, models, I think, because we want to define a new model to store this post data in inside of. So this is gonna be a new class, and it's gonna say, I'm gonna say post models.model, and I'm going to say post, so just, it's going to be a models dot uh, character field and this is going to have a maximum length of say 500 so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to associate a user with it as well so I'm going to say user is equal to models dot foreign key and this is going to be user so that's the built-in Django user that we've been using for our authentication system. So I need to import that from Django.contrib.auth.models import user. So just like that, now that should work. What I need to do now is I need to def define the form again. So what we've been using is this home form which has a form uh, field and this has been working so that we have our post form. Now what I want to do instead is save this data to a model and we have access to this data in the view so one particular approach to this problem could be to go into our view and we could do something like taking this text variable and saving that uh, to our, our database in that model that we just created but what a better way of doing that is, is using what's called a Django model form. So what I'm going to do is change the existing form that we have to use this new model form rather than just a form. So the only difference is that a model form is a form that is linked with a model and it's called bound, so it's bound to a, a particular model as opposed to an unbound form which would just be uh, forms.form like we have at the moment which would just be something that is not connected to a model itself or at least we're just accessing the data in the view without storing that data necessarily so it doesn't know uh, where to store the data it's receiving in other words so it's not bound to a particular location where it can store that data so hopefully that makes sense in terms of bound versus unbound forms so what I'm going to do now is change the form to be a model form so to do that, I'm just going to say forms, instead of forms.form that we inherit from, I'm going to say forms.modelForm. And now that we've done that, we need to define what's called a meta class. And I'm just going to specify model. So the model that it's linking to is going to be that one that we created called post. And we also need to specify the fields from that model. So I'm going to say fields. I could also say excludes if I just wanted to say I want to include all these fields except for one or two if you have a model with a lot of fields but in this case I'm just going to explicitly explicitly list the fields that I want within this form so in this case it is just post so I don't want the user but I do want the user on the model so that I know uh, who who actually made that post so I can say something like oh this post was by this particular author for example so we can do that, and this is a common mistake that a lot of people make when they first try to program this fields attribute on the meta class because they tend to write it like this, and this might look fine to you because surely it's a, a tuple of one element that has a string inside. But the thing with Python is that you have to add this little comma to make it so that uh, so that it's still a tuple when it is stored in the variable. The reason that you have to do this, in fact, I'm just going to show you a quick sort of side note in case you're not aware of this, is that if you have, say, what's called tuple unpacking in Python, so you have x, y equals uh, 1, 2. So we have two variables being assigned two different things, in this case integers, uh, 
to each other but on the same line. So x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2. That's what this line is saying. And in fact I can show you this better in a Python shell. So I'm just going to say Python, uh, I'm using 3.6 and I can say x, y is equal to 1, 2. So now we have x is equal to 1 and we have y is equal to 2. And what we can do is we can make this a tuple. So we could say, okay, so in this case it's still going to be the same because we're still having 1 go into x and 2 go into y because it's doing what's called tuple unpacking. So it unpacks the uh, each element inside this tuple into each variable on the left hand side and the only condition here is that there is an equal amount of uh, things on the left as on the right so there's two variables on the left and two elements in the tuple on the right so we have X and we have Y now if we have for example one uh, one a tuple with one element so we just have X is equal to one like this, it's still going to try to unpack it. So it makes sense now that one goes into x as an integer. So x, and if we do type x, we can see, we can verify that, and it says indeed it's an integer, it's not a tuple. So if we did something like x is equal to one, two, we have x, and that's a tuple. So just to verify that we could do type x and we have a tuple but if we do now x is equal to one comma this is saying don't bother to unpack this tuple or the element in this tuple into the variable on the left just leave it as a tuple because that is the data type that I want it to be stored as it is a tuple not an uh, well a type inferred uh, element as the, the element inside this tuple. It is just the tuple itself. So that's the reason it's the comma anyway. So now carrying on, carrying on with this form, with that comma there, we have the post. So it's got the post field and now if we go back into our models, uh, well we've made changes to our models so every time that we make changes to our model we must uh, make the migration so that the change can be reflected in our database because I'll show you what happens if we don't do that so I'm just going to go to the browser and I'm going to refresh so I'm going to run the server again Django admin run server uh, and it says okay so post is not defined so I've probably made a mistake somewhere or I haven't finished so I haven't imported uh, post so model equals post I haven't imported post so I'm going to do uh, from home.models so this is where we define the post model and I need to say import post so that should go away now and now if we refresh we get back to this page and I'm going to try to submit some data and so that seemed to work but what we haven't done yet is try to save data using that model form and we need a small change to the views.py so where we say form is valid uh, at the moment we've got the clean data and we store that in a variable text but we don't save the form data at all and what we can do instead is we can just say or as well as if you like uh, we can say form dot save so this is going to save all the data in the post request so it's the the data that was passed in uh, to this request object in the post request and it's just going to save that now using our model form and the reason that you can do dot save is because we associated the form with the model so in that meta class where it said model equals post it now knows that it can store that post data into the post model that we defined for that data because previously that didn't exist so we couldn't save it anywhere because it didn't know where to save it so now if we try that and I'm going to just uh, refresh again just to make sure it's still working and I'm going to try to submit that post request. So now, as I was saying earlier, we don't have the uh, database yet, or we, we don't have the database uh, up to date with our current model state. So to fix that issue, we need to make a migration and then apply that to the database. So I can just do, if 
we quit out of that again, Django, Django admin, uh, make migrations, and if you like you can specify the app home, but it doesn't really matter for this case because we've only got one small change. If you had lots of different apps and you didn't necessarily want to mig make, make the migrations for everything, uh, you could just specify the app and that would just do only that particular app that we were working on. So in this case it was home. And now that we've done that, I'm going to apply that migration to our database. So Django admin migrate, I'm just using the standard backend, which is the SQLite 3. So now that's applied, we should be able to use this. I'm going to resubmit the post request. And of course, we haven't run the development server again. So I'm going to do Django admin run server. I always forget that. And now if we submit the post, post data in this post request, uh, it says not null. This is because in our model for our post we specified that if we have a look at the model we have a user field. So this is because we haven't specified the user and we've only asked uh, in our form for the uh, post uh, form to be presented. So we haven't asked for the user to be presented and that's for good reason because we don't need it to be presented because we already know the logged in user. So we can use the user associated with the request to store to be stored in that database along with that post so that we know who wrote that post, who posted that uh, data for us if you like. So what I can do is do form.save commit equals false and we've got a post object which is returned by that. So if you do commit equals false, it means I, I want to save this form, but I want to do something with the object uh, post before before I actually save it for good. So I'm going to do post dot user is equal to request dot user. So it needs that association because we said that uh, it's a mandatory field or it's a mandatory field by default which is why we got that not null constraint. So now if I do post.save, so saving that object to the database, and I should be able to try that again. I'll resubmit that. And if we do this again, so that seemed to work. It used that redirect, so I'm presuming it's saved. So if we have a look now, if I do Django admin shell, we can import the model. We could do from home.models, import post and if I do post dot objects dot all we should be able to see the objects stored in the database so in this case we have uh, we managed to save two objects so the first one was caused by that error so it won't have a user associated with it and then the second one is uh, correct that's how you store objects in your database based on your Django model form and in the next one, we're going to continue on with our progress on the homepage.